Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grip Lock Foundation Disc Golf's weekly podcast. Uh, today, we're doing the Dynamic Discs Open Preview. It's actually, by the time this is coming out, going to be starting today, uh, which is super exciting. And in case you can't tell, we're still in the car. We're still in the car. So we're, we are currently seven uh, at now, this moment of recording. The phone just took a screenshot. <laughs> now, how did, how that? did that happen? Uh, oh, because it, it triple tapped. It must triple tapped on the back <laughs> yeah, That's going to happen a lot. Uh, we're currently seven hours and 27 minutes away from Lynchburg, Virginia, where we reside. And um, yeah, I'm your host, but not for this episode, Hunter, joined always by Trevor and Connor. Trevor's going to be taking over the hosting for today, and um, should be a good yeah, time, yeah, but we'll right. get you, That's I'll let Trevor, you. Okay, you, go, you. you go for it, host. Let's talk dynamic discs, right? So dynamic discs started out Dude, uh, No, we just need to turn it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so last year, Dynamic Disc Open. So Dynamic Disc Open's been around for a while now. It used to be the glass blown open. Um, since 2020, Dynamic Disc Open. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, can you fix that? All right. Okay. Small technical difficulties. The phone is uh, going to be interesting. We're going to see how that works. But Dynamic Disc Open last year. Let's take a look back. Let's see what happened. Last year, Paul Beth kind of destroyed everybody. He won by six strokes, which... Even for last year, or even maybe the year before that, that's kind of unheard of. Was it a full field? Um, yeah, he, he won over Ricky and Calvin. He shot 42 under for the course of the event. Ricky and Calvin came in at 36. Um, very dominant performance. Uh, on the FPO side, this is actually an interesting one because we had Haley King winning that's right. the Dynamitis Open, and she won oh, I forgot about by that. six strokes as well over Katrina Allen. Um, and then after that, it was kind of just like a random scramble of players, but pretty dominant from Haley King. Um, last year, this was not a pro tour. This is the national tour finale. Um, no, it's a finale. No, national tour event. But um, this year, obviously, it'll be a pro tour. Um, but yeah, so kind of an interesting mix. The MPO side, only really surprising because of the margin of victory, not necessarily the player. Um, but MP or FPO, surprising that this was one of the uh, wins that Haley King had. Um, looking at the statistics to kind of, I kind of to get a feel for, you know, what led to success out there. It seemed like the biggest key for the MPO player was just staying in bounds. Um, obviously, anytime you're going to go out to the country club, that's going to become a factor. So having the least amount of out of bounds strokes was really directly correlated to the winner. Well, one thing to note too with the the statistics is that it is a different course this year. Yes. Not the country club. We'll, the we'll get to that. Pretty much the same. Oh, okay, we'll get to that. We'll get I'm to used that. to hosting. This is, this is tough for me. Yeah, I know it is. <laughs> I can tell. Um, but as far as the, the MPO, kind of what, what mattered last year at least, uh, it seemed to just be keeping the disc in bounds. Um, everything else that Paul did, the thing is it's kind of misleading because Paul won by so much and dominated so much that like he kind of led all of the statistics or, or at least was close with mm. all of them. So there wasn't like one thing that he did that much better other yeah. than keeping the disc in bounds um on the fpo side it seemed like Haley king and katrina allen both just out threw everybody by a ton uh, These stroke, are definitely throw our courses. right so strokes tita green uh was a big deal the only difference of course is that Haley king just out putted katrina big time i think i think she had about five strokes gained over katrina uh putting mm. so i mean that's basically the tournament uh, as you can see, it's golden hour on the screen there. <laughs> what the heck? I'm gone. I just got Hunter, eaten by the sight. Like Hunter might just be a blob uh, for this. That's fine. Are these you guys' engagement pictures? Yeah. Yeah, basically. Audio listeners are missing out right now. Um, but, yeah, so it's there's not really – and the thing is with the statistics, um, we'll kind of get into this now because the format last year was different. This year they're going to be playing four rounds total. So they're going to be doing – uh, two rounds at Jones Park, the Supreme 18 layout, uh, a new layout for that course. And then they're going to finish with two rounds at the Country Club. Um, and then there's going to be a cut after the third round. Oh, after the third? Yes. Fascinating. So after, Why not after two? I wonder. Well, I feel like disc golf always does one. No, it's on. usually two and two. Disc golf? There's a four-round tournament, right? Or no, I guess you're right. After I think the third. Golf. I don't like that. I like it being two. Yeah. But oh, I guess disc in this golf, case they need they want you to play both courses and they're doing yeah, it. Yeah, disc golf always here. does lets only does it one round that that has to be cut. I wonder um, why they're not going um, back and forth. Yeah, Jones Supreme Country Club. I don't Club, know. I don't. Country Club. I don't really like that format necessarily. I don't know how I feel about it. I honestly don't know. I, because on one hand, it's like 
it's almost like there's like two chapters to the tournament, which is kind of cool. Yeah. But I kind of like it's a little less repetitive. Well, what's I guess. even more confusing is that for worlds they are doing that. They are going yeah, back and forth and back and right. forth. Right. So maybe like that was like the only way they could change things up. I don't know. But in any case, so the cut is top forty percent of the MPO field. So the cash line. Uh, yeah, is going to make it in fifty percent of the FPO field makes the cut um so that's the format so the big thing here is yeah like the why st- the statistics from last year not necessarily directly correlated because of the different format and also the big story here is that we are basically looking at the exact same two courses that are going to be played for yeah. worlds yeah well okay before we get there okay go ahead why is there a 10 percent difference in the cut line like why why is FBO you know what's interesting is when i looked at the first place i looked was where did I see? Hold on, let me find it because okay. I think I saw two different um, projections. Projections for the cut. When I looked at the Dynamic Disc Open website, that's where I saw. Okay, wait. Uh, yeah, this should be it. So, on the player schedule, it says. Okay, yeah, on the player schedule, it says Sunday, May first, so last round, and it says tea time start for the final round. For top 40% of MPO and FPO. However, when okay. you go to the projected play payout page, projected pro payout, it says on Sunday we will cut the field down to top 40% for MPO and 50% for FPO. So it might be a so might be a typo. They're contradicting themselves somewhere. It might be a typo in the payout page. It might be. 40% for both makes sense. That's the cut line. It seems weird that you would so make that typo though. Like that's a pretty because well, you had to say and the top 50%. Like, you would have said 40% for both. So I think the typo is in the other one. I think they're going 40-50. It's just weird to have the extra 10% for one division and, like, is the cut is the, is the the cut still the cash line? Like, and it is, says, are they payout is more? not guaranteed to all who make the cut okay. as only the top 40% of MPO and top 50% of FPO are paid. So top 50% of FPO is paid. So that's it. They're then, cutting at the cut line. Why, 10% why is it not guaranteed paid? to all who make the cut? That sentence doesn't make sense. Payout is not guaranteed to all who make the cut, as all the as only the top forty percent MPO and top fifty percent of FPO are paid. But that's the cut. Am I missing something there? I read that verbatim. Maybe if you DNF. If there are ties, oh wait, okay. If there are ties for the last spot going into the cut, there's a chance that someone could finish outside the payout line after the final round. That makes uh, sense. Okay. Because okay. including could, ties have, make the cut. Yeah. That so was an important more. sentence for me to read there. Yes. Very uh, good journalism. Okay, fascinating. So they're paying ten percent. <laughs> more in FPO. They're paying 10% deeper. Yeah, they haven't. I don't think they've released. I've never released, seen that before. Let me see if they have the purse. I don't Probably think they not. do. They I don't, normally don't until like after the first round. Yeah. No, okay, well that's nope. interesting. But okay, back to what you were originally Last saying. Last year's purse was 70 grand. Yeah. So back to what you were originally saying. Of, yeah. Uh, in five miles, continue on I-64. Back to what you were originally I-64. saying of the world's courses. So yeah. this is something that I, it's a big pet peeve of mine. I cannot stand in disc golf when because world is already having a trouble like a a battle with being what makes worlds important other than the name yeah yeah like why why are we putting so much weight on worlds over other majors beyond just the name so when we have a tournament earlier in the season like this one the dynamic disc open where we're playing the exact same courses then it adds even more to it like one of these two tournaments doesn't mean anything. Like dynamic, I mean, obviously it means something. It's a pro tour, but you get what I'm right. saying. Like the dynamic There's is nothing open, special about now it. Now it's just a world's preview. Right. right. Yeah. The only thing, the only thing that worlds had other than the title, which like, that's fine and all. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. But like, yeah, like it's it's it just like takes away the only allure yeah. of the event. I well, guess. because earlier in the season, we literally talked about this. I think it was the off season or early in the season because I think it, I think it was the off season right after USDGC. Yeah, we were told Jones Supreme was going to be the new course for Worlds, and so DDO and Worlds are going to have two dipl- completely right. different courses. Like it was going to be both at Emporia Country Club, and I was fine. like okay with that. Yeah, you know? like that makes sense because then you're coming back to Emporia, you have the Country Club, that's fine. But then one's playing Jones Gold. And then Worlds has Jones Supreme, which, like, sets it apart. It makes it a yeah. different tournament. This is the same tournament. It's like when we went to Ledgestone and then Worlds. It's just super weird. Or, like, we're going to go D-Glow and then Worlds. I just hate that. Because yeah. it, it, like, takes away from the DDO, I feel like. Well, and it's like yeah. if, you're, if you're Emporia, right, and you're submitting a bid 
for worlds, like you know that you're not going to just not have DDO, right? Yeah. Like you know you're not just going to erase that event, and you want to keep that on the courses that you've had the event historically. So I don't know what's out there in Emporia, but I'm sure I mean, they can find like, another golf course. Well, there's like Oz, or, yeah, or like yeah. you got I, I just, Wolfie Lake or whatever it's called. Yeah, like I I don't know. Like I, I wish they would have just done something different because yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a bummer watching worlds at the same course as we just Brody, seen an event. Brody made a great point on debate night um, this morning when we shot it. And he's he was talking about like worlds, like what makes it special. Because obviously as disc golfers, worlds feel special to us. And he you was, can call yourself world champion. Yeah, but he yeah. was saying he was like, if you want to understand why it's tough for worlds to be separated, try explaining to someone who doesn't know anything about disc golf why the world championship matters more than a normal tournament. Yeah. He's no. like, that's a tough one because it does he, he's like, he was doing that with one of his friends, his friend who's just getting into disc golf. was like, so worlds, like what makes it special? And bro was like, well, the, the winner's the world, like a world champion. And they're like, okay. So like, is there more people from other countries all come in? And it's like the only one with that field of like all these different countries or like, is it the course? Like, what is yeah. it? And bro just like, uh, uh, it, uh, is the title. <laughs> like that's, that's <laughs> it. Like yeah, what is literally there? It is. It's, it's literally the fact that you get to call yourself a world champion. And, and we now, put so much weight on that, well, too. I mean, yeah, and I, that's kind of the point of a major, right, is to, like, to be the weight of those events comes from... Sure, but the world has more than any other major. Right. Well, that's because I think it's the, I mean, it's the longest one that exists. So I guess that... And also... But it's a title. Basically, it's though, a title but, more than anything, right? But the the re I think a big part of the reason is because back in the day, manufacturers, cough cough, Innova, decided that like that was going to be the end all be all. You get your name on a disc, yeah, and th so that's a big deal. Like, yeah, it's life changing for players. But right. I just wish it like. I wish they treated like, USDGC like, like I, that. I I still think if we're having worlds every year. It needs to have its own courses of some type or something like that where we're not going to those courses any other time that year. And it needs to, I think it needs to be. That is fascinating what I do here. What do you mean? What does it say? Continue. Okay, continue. <laughs> I really feel like I was supposed to go that way. Straight for six minutes to I-64 East to I-71 North Lexington. I really feel like I'm supposed to be on that bridge. Anyways, we'll figure that this out in really a second. This really feels right. This feels right to you? No. This feels really wrong to me. Where were we on that bridge before? When we went into New Albany? Yeah, we de I definitely was supposed to be on that bridge. No, but we went into New Albany. We may not be trying to go into New Albany. This oh, am I going under? What? Uh, it's, we're, a double -decker ooh, uh, bridge? it's a double-decker bridge. It's a double-decker double bridge. bridge. Fascinating. Anyways, that I think cool. that Worlds, we need to be playing courses that this is incredible. This is incredible. Good call, Trevor. We need to be playing courses that we don't play, like, regularly throughout the season. Right? So, like, we go to Worlds. It's a course we haven't played yeah. before. And... Well, just one that hasn't I been played think, that season. Yeah, I think so. Worlds, if we're going to keep calling it Worlds, needs more than four rounds. Some Worlds sometimes do have five and stuff. This one's going to have four again. I think it needs to have five or six rounds if we're calling it Worlds. Because it needs to be something that, like, then you can explain, like, oh, well, there's two extra rounds that help separate the best player in the world. Or some, like something that separates it, if I, we're calling it a world championship. Yeah. I do feel like, tell me if, I, if I'm wrong, but I feel like a while ago, Worlds definitely was more of a showcase for yeah, everybody Worlds from had, different countries. Uh, to a certain degree. Like I felt players, like there were more, players, there was more diversity well, in countries there. The difference was the tour didn't really exist that much. So it wasn't as okay, big of a deal. So yeah, if, you right. were, if you were the best player in Japan, you were coming for Worlds. If yeah, you're Manabu yeah, Kaji, yeah, yeah. You, but you weren't coming for tour events because it didn't uh -huh. make sense to. Now, if you're good enough to be making a living on tour, you're gonna make a living on tour as much yeah. as you can. Ooh, so, like the ooh. Evelina Solonins, the I mean that that came <laughs> bouncing like crazy. Teetering. The Evelina Solonins, the Kristen Tatars, uh, Seppo Paiu, Nicholas Antia. I don't know. I butcher his name every time, but those players are coming over for tour events now. So yeah. Worlds isn't this like spectacle of all these players come over now because if you're good enough you're gonna want to be on tour. Hashtag where's KJ Naibo? KJ Naibo, yeah. Where's man. KJ? No, uh, I, I agree I, with that. A, I just think something needs to separate it. There's got to be something more I, than just the dame. Honestly, my opinion is like it's tough because this is not gonna be popular opinion, shocker. Can't but wait. it's tough shocker. because like <laughs> Worlds is already so cemented in the sport, it's tough to get rid of it. But I just kind of wish it didn't exist. Mm. 
I kind of oh. wish. <laughs> oh, Trevor! I kind of wish there was just four majors. I think this carbon dioxide is, is his car's to his head. The <laughs> best way, the best way to talk about a disc golfer's success is how many majors they've won, not how many worlds they've won. Well, it should be, yeah. Um, and the, well, and the the problem is, worlds was weighed so heavily that that's the reason why that's that kind of stigma happened. Um, but I think that over time we're going to if we can consistently have the four majors that we want we'll start to weigh them all equally um, I, not as long as worlds exists right i think worlds is a, i think worlds is a problem because that title yeah. i think the only way we're ever going to weigh them equally and i think we should worlds do that shouldn't be a major is because we talked about that is that right so i just don't even think it needs to exist i don't think it needs to exist i think there's just i think there should be the champions cup the european open we have a us open and then just come up with another one and make it special. The Players' Championship. I think, I think, yeah, like whatever, like whatever it might be. The Foundation then, Open. I don't know. I'm just throwing ideas out here. Yeah, yeah. We've got four majors. Connor Kennedy we, Open. We have yeah, four like majors. Like they are mm-hmm. all considered um, equal, but special in their own right. Because like the thing is, like in golf, like yeah, the Masters is considered very special. But if you win a major, you win a major. Like that's yeah. when we when people are talked about. You're talking about how many majors they've won, not just. Oh well, they've won. Yeah, they've won five majors, but four of them were U.S. Opens. Not they only have one Masters. Like so, that doesn't really matter. Like that's not a thing, and I think that's how it should be. I don't like it. it just confuses the world. Confuses things. It's yeah. almost like a part of the sport that is kind of stuck there that isn't really. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we on the worst road ever? Like last stick time? the stick the leg in front more there straight. Yeah, because yeah. it's teetering too okay. much. Here, set. The legal sense now. All right, sorry everybody. This All is right, you know we're getting real there raw. There we go. Oh, yeah. that, was good. that thing's not going anywhere. It's tilted a little bit. No, no, no it's okay. Hey, dude, don't worry Doesn't about matter. it. Doesn't I don't even matter. need to be in frame. <laughs> it's, it's raw in here, guys. Yeah. All right, that was raw. big. Okay. That was big. You know what? That's good that that happened because we need to get off the world's topic. No, let me say one no, more thing. No, we need, okay. I wasn't done. You get to say one more thing, then we're done with talking about worlds. We need to talk about the DDO. Um, this isn't a world's preview. No, you're right. I'm done. No, say your thing. I don't remember what I was gonna say. All right, well, that's you're fine. done. All right, so back to DDO. World sucks. Um, I'm not hosting. Back to DDO, Trevor. Okay. What um, else you got? The last thing I had mentioned kind of as uh, something to talk about is the weather looks a little dicey in Emporia. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Shocker. This is Yeah, well, this is going to be – there's going to be kind of a key to this because I think one of the keys to this tournament is going to be survival because the first two days are going to be scattered thunderstorms. Um, first day is not going to be particularly – windy but the second day will be so um making that cut and is going to involve surviving some weather because even now this is a tough thing how is the wind going to affect ricky's helicopter ride into the course that's a good point Uh, that's because even the third round is not necessarily rainy but very windy um but sunday handle it it's really overstable yes (laughs) but sunday is looking sunny and like winds down so good for scoring um so if you can survive up until the last the last round like you, you're going to be right where you need to be like the weather might not be as much of a factor that at that point so yeah that's a great point it's going to be something to look at also whenever you're dealing with wind and rain and scattered thunderstorms especially uh, we're probably going to see certain tea times just get out there early or late depending on which one it hits and there's going to be different there's gonna be some of that weather cheese going on Trevor, where like up. what push that tripod up yeah, the, the weather, whenever the weather's, like, scattered like that, there's definitely going to be some, like, cheater tee times. Where yeah. Well, you're just gonna... dealt a good or a bad hand, and, like, you play hole 16 at Emporia. <laughs> so you play hole 16 at Emporia in, like, a hurricane with hail coming down, and then other people play it, and it's sunny with... I'm going to let Waze talk. <laughs> falling apart right now. <laughs> Bring it together. Apart. Other people get to play hole 16 with just like a sunny, right. light breeze. You it know all, I mean? Yeah, it kind of annoys me when it happens like that. I mean, it's but just part no, of the game. There's no way to go But like around. somebody will go out there at like 10 in the morning and, and shoots like 12 under. And then everybody later in the afternoon is like scrapping for par. And we might see some of that. Now, what do you expect this Jones Supreme course to be like? I have no idea. I don't know what to expect. I know. I have seen some footage of it here and there. I assume it's going to be pretty um, intense. Brody was talking about he he doesn't like hole one. He said that he he said that it's going to be like he he was making it sound like it's a very tough hole to go for and get, and like the layup is like a hundred and fifty foot shot. So you like uh, lay up, lay up. So you said like if the wind's bad enough, you might see the all four players in lead card throw like a yeah, hundred foot tee shot. That's lame. I'm like that's kind of weird, but I don't know. Um, 
I, I've seen like a, some. There's a sick island hole. I saw Emac aced it, I think. Um, and I'm pretty excited to see it because I, I like Jones Park and this Jones Supreme layout. I mean, yeah, we'll I mean, see what it, it is. I think Emac is probably the one designing all. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like he does a pretty good job. Yeah, he knows and what he's doing. The courses out there are good. I I will say this, Dynamic runs really good events. So, like as far as Worlds is concerned, for and like the course repeating thing like it's still going to be a well-run event yeah um like there's nothing wrong with that no it, it's not going to be any issues like last year it's just weird so i worlds. guess like with that being said you know we're kind of ranting about it but with that being said hey pay really close attention to this dynamic disc open yeah if you're really wanting to see what's going to happen in worlds because literally is if you see a guy go out there and just get crushed like guess what they're, they're probably to, they're not going to win worlds yeah they're going to have a hard <laughs> time at worlds if so, they, point, they struggle here. Point. it's a very and if they if there's a random player that like for instance, I think it was um, Emerson. Emerson played really good at Ledgestone, didn't he? No, this was the when they did the Utah Open. Utah last Open. year. It okay, was, yeah, yeah. So like a player like that, you might see a player that like sneaks up, and I you're mean, this, this is brothers, so bumpy. We shouldn't have done tunnel. this in Kentucky. Uh, you might see a player that just pops off like that, and then. <laughs> <laughs> And then you're like, oh, wow, that could be a dark horse pick for Worlds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is the bumpiest road What's we've happening? ever been on. I feel like it was this so is, successful. When this we has to be the worst. worst we were on just a blank stretch of highway Yeah, we shot time. in we shot in Illinois or Indiana where it's just cornfields and fairy tales. Yeah, we're sure we're going to find out another camera set up. Uh, this is Pothole City. Yeah, this is Pothole City. Well, the banner's going to be in the dark and anyways. the banner's going to be in the dark anyways. So nobody's going to see anything. Yeah, so nobody's exactly. going to see it. Um, all right, well, <laughs> let's just get... Let's just end everyone's suffering and get into some predictions, huh? That's right. huh? How about that? I was host? about to say the same thing. Yeah. What do you think, host? Yeah, what do you think, host? You like yeah, that? let's get into predictions. Or, you know, I need your keys I to victory. Have so many more storylines. I need Trevor's keys to victory, and we need the more storylines. Okay. I'm, I'm over. I'm overstepping. I apologize. No, that. there's no more storylines. Sorry, but about I will. You said give, you had more storylines. No, it was a joke. Oh. Um, we'll give. I will give my keys to victory. Um, number one, I love when they do the keys to victory, and they just say things like, "You just got to make your putts." <laughs> Like yeah, yeah. Of are course. you coming after like, me? No kidding. No, that's no. My key, that has been my key to victory multiple times. That is, that is very true. <laughs> it's one thing. No, it's one thing if you say like, putting is going to be huge. But when people just say like, yeah, you got to just make putts. Well, yeah. Anyways, I digress. Yeah. Um, I think that I think it's going to be. It's just going to smart golf is going to win out there. Kind of survival golf, um, knowing when to take your chances, uh, mm. because of the wind situation. And there's a lot of OB, especially at the country club. Um, I think that that's just going to be a big deal. Um, I also I think a big key to victory whenever the weather looks like trash is just players are going to have to accept their fate before they go out there because I I mean from experience like anybody will tell you if you go out into a round and you just see the weather and you're just getting bummed about it like you're just going to suck out there yeah. it, you've already lost but if you go out there already knowing the weather is going to be trash and your disc is going to get tossed around and you just really apply it to your game and you think about the mm -hmm. wind and what it's going to do and you play the wind you can have success out there you really yeah. can yeah so i mean that's that's going to be what it's all about it seems like um and i i think that you really it's just about making the cut because if you can get to that sunday sunday seems like scoring day sunday sunday yeah. sunday so i think if you can just make it to sunday within reach that's going to be the time to make a move so it's kind of just like keep yourself in it and to that point um i don't know i'd be curious to see what people shoot out on this this new course um because obviously last year uh paul won with a 42 under across four rounds which is pretty steep yeah. Um, so if this Jones course is, is no joke and the weather's kind of iffy, we probably won't see scores that low. Um, but anyways, into predictions. Um, I guess, uh, Connor, you want to lead we know off? Where the, where, do we know where the point standings are? We talked about yeah, it. We talked We're about somewhere. it on Monday. I think I'm like three They're strokes. In my I, believe, phone. I believe I'm at 29. Hunter's I'm at, lead. 40, I'm at 44. 44. I think I'm at 37. You're at 37. Okay, that's okay. where we're at. Or by y'all might be flipped. Who's going no, first? I'm in last. I'm in well, last. No, I'm saying points. Like you might be at 30. You might be at 27, and Connor might be at 39. But oh. it doesn't matter. I they're, think, they're I'm, I think I'm at 39, actually. Okay. I think Trevor's at 27. I'm getting crushed. All right, Connor, you lead us off. Yeah, okay, I'll lead us off. Um... I can't remember my my note. It's in my notes on my phone, so I'm just gonna try okay, to remember. Okay, Hunter, you lead us off. No, right, no, 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 I'm good. If I'm gonna remember, I'm gonna remember okay. it now, right now. Um, so first of all, dark horse pick. Oh no, go MPO no, we're first. We're doing MPO. Going MPO first. I thought we were just kind of clumping them together. No, no, no. MPO. We would never. Come on, I believe dude. This is I went. Podcast. Yep, <laughs> yeah. I got it. Yeah, I went. 
Paul McBeth. Gosh, dude. Calvin. Okay. And then Dickerson. Oh, sneaky Chris. Chris. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. That's crazy, yeah. dude. Now, what combination of those did you do, Hunter? I don't have Chris in mind. So I, I, got I, didn't put Ricky, I did not put Ricky Ricky's in my top three. Ricky's winning this. Helicopter That's a Hunter Rick? Thomas guarantee. Anyone want to bet? Whoa! You know what? Ten dollars, Trevor. You never pay me the ten. You shake. If Ricky doesn't win, I, okay, I'm, I'm shaking. Does, shook. If He's Ricky all, doesn't Trevor's win, it's a wash. Okay. If Ricky does win, you owe me twenty. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna dig myself a deep gambling debt. You can just pay me back. In That's the not fair. Just because Trevor agreed to that, now it's gonna happen. You, you're you're doing the black magic. No, that Ricky Wysocki's winning this tournament. Paul McBeth's coming in second. And as boring as it is, Calvin Heimberg's coming in third. That's my top three. That's going to be the top three. Paul's not fashion. a second place person. We've talked about it. Oh, what did he come in last yeah, week, Connor? That's funny because no. last week he what, came what in second. What did he come second. in last week, Connor? Mm, I'm not pretty sure, sure he's got a couple second places. places. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he has a lot sure of second came places. To okay, cool. Second. So. I think that's like a false narrative that we created. Yeah, we definitely <laughs> did. It really is. Um, I have but it sticks so hard Similar. It. Yeah, it did for me for a long time. you got to let it go. Uh, yes, I've got Paul in first, Ricky in second, and Calvin in third. Nice. Well, Ricky, doesn't, so not, Ricky doesn't come in second. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll start off. Always blank. I'll start the FPO. Um, in third place, I'm going with Katrina Allen. Second place, I'm going with Valerie Mandahano. Love it. Nice. Just threw it in there. That's home good, team. That's a good She's playing for the home team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Could have took Kona, but match nah, can do it. Um, and then... <laughs> First, I've got Chris. Wait, did I say second? Yeah, I did. First, I got Kristen Tatar because you got to go with the hot hand. And, like, I mean, she just beat the snot out of everybody last week. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm going Kristen Tatar first. Uh, it's hard to bet against Paige, so I'm not going to do it. Paige Pierce. She throws second. out of bounds too much, though. She does. That's the thing is I feel like Katrina and Kristy keep it in bounds more. You already, you already said it, though. I did. I'm so, locking it. Paige Pierce, second place. I mean, Katrina what do we Allen, know? Third. Like, All right, I'm glad you st- stuck with that because what mine was going to be was Kristen Cat Page. Okay. Wow. Well, That's first, second, third. These nice. first, second, thirds are just ridiculous. Like, can people start stepping up? I mean, last week we literally had, what, Ella Hansen and Cat Mershon second and third. So, yeah, come on. People start stepping up. We're yeah. tired of Paige winning yeah. every week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Paige lost well, by, like, 37 okay. last week. I guess week. what I mean by that no, is, dude. like, can, can you consistently get second and thirds? Because, like, how can we predict it? Also, Valerie Mandahana, that was a great pick. She's, it's like she's been a, able to it's do an it. anomaly. I don't know what you're talking about. Trevor. All right, Dark Horse. This I've got a really good Dark Horse That's because sick. I've got the Eric Oakley because Eric this Oakley. is a revenge game. Mm. This is a revenge game from Eric oh. Oakley. Oh. They didn't give enough money, and he said, you know, adios, infinite discs, and now he's be throwing emperors all over the country club nice. right in Jeremy Roscoe's face. Love it. Uh, crazy. I I I feel like this is the tournament every year we hear this name, and so why would I think any different? Zachariah Johnson Zachariah. always sneaks up, and you always hear his I name in this tournament. I hope he came an idiot last year. He might have. You know what? <laughs> I just know we say stuff like no, that. No, but this is my gut. <laughs> yeah, he probably came an idiot. I might finally caught. Never mind. I'll let you keep going. You can't. You can't fact check my gut. <laughs> Zachariah, Zachariah, Zachariah Johnson always performs better than you expect at this tournament. Yes. Put it that way. Put it that where way. do you expect him to finish? I don't know. Lower than I got did. no expectations. Exactly. All so right. he'll beat him. Thank and you. he's going to come high enough to win me. Okay. I, yep. me. <laughs> I feel like, you know how like you come to that. You, you what is that the, church? Is that like a Scientology or something? That thing's huge. Look at that thing. I think that was a factory. Oh, you know, over the left? With, with the cross on wow, top? Wow, that's like huge. Is that Joel Olstein's building? Old it's Joel massive. Okay, okay, so um, you know how you get to that point in your life where like the year that you rem- you realize that your dad doesn't know everything and he's actually just talking out of his butt most of the time? Is that what you just realized I about haven't Hunter? Really, no, I haven't found that it's yet. It's taking that... <laughs> <laughs> No, it's that same thing happened to me with Hunter and Trevor where I first started working at Foundation. I was like, dang, they just are always so confident. They know exactly what they're talking about. Now I know it's just confidence. They yeah. don't always know exactly what hey, they're talking about. Thanks for you're calling talk- us idiots. Dude, you freak, talking man, you're not in first time. place anymore. You can't say that. <laughs> yeah, easy, Connor's beating easy you. Easy to say that from the back Hunter's beating seat, you. Guys. I'm just saying that because like you guys said the thing about how Paul doesn't get, come in second place, and then I took that as gospel. Well, he, he did <laughs> well, do I mean, that, that is, though, for a while. That is fair, though. All right. Just my we're, dark we're gonna get work. Someone, hey, I can't use my phone because I'm driving. Someone look up where Zachariah Johnson has come and fact check me. Do no. it. Uh, I will. No, eventually. my dark horse pick is Chandler Fry because the Chanimal. I like him a lot. He's been finishing too good recently. 
Yeah, Whoa. you can't That's you crazy. can't go with the hot hand no. ever with these yeah, predictions. Yeah, that that especially not with FPO. You can't be picking Kristen yeah, to win. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, that's I just chose them just like ironically. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> as long as you weren't serious. Then All right, I, I just like Chandler Fry. I've watched him on He's YouTube cool. sometimes. He's Animal baby. All right, everybody, here's the thing. Thanks for hanging in with us. Obviously, thanks uh, for sticking through. I don't know yeah, why you did, this but is, you're here. This isn't an ideal situation. We're still on the road. We're grinding. Next it's week six we'll be hour, back. Six hours, fifty-five minutes. We'll be back in studio next week. But uh, hopefully, this preview was enjoyable, and uh, hopefully, you guys are looking forward to checking out the DDO. Um, I can't wait to try a new energy drink at our next stop. Yeah, we're uh, I'm we've got down off of my last one. It's currently eight thirty p.m., and we're gonna be getting back in around four a.m. So. <laughs> Just thought I'd let you everybody right know now that. It says it's probably best we end this now because if hey, and here's a good plug, I guess. If you haven't yeah. checked out the banter or or the Patreon mailbag, if you're not a Patreon, now is the time because these next two podcasts we're about to get to are gonna be crazy. Gonna be <laughs> They're gonna be crazy. <laughs> we're so, waiting the banter we're not doing until like two AM. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna leave you all I with that. Feel it right now. I already can't um, really control what I'm saying. Thank you. <laughs> My filter is diminishing. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next week.